Hello, welcome to the talk. My name is Louis Zhen. I'm a faculty from Boston College, and here I'm excited to share our paper, Cassandra Plus: Trading of Consistency, Latency, and Fault Tolerance in Cassandra, with you. And this is a joint work with my collaborators and my great students from Boston College. And the work is partially supported by NSF. So we focus on database. Traditionally, a database is running on one machine. However, it's limited by many things, like for example, the fault tolerance or like performance. So right now, because we get more and more data, and we have more and more clients, we want to replicate the database, or so-called a distributed database. And there are several other advantage. One of them is that lower latency, because that the、uh, for the for the clients, you only need to contact the the, the database that's、uh, closer to you. You don't need to go all the way to the very far、uh, machines. And then this will shorten the late、uh, will shorten the latency. And then you also have a scalability. That ideally, if you add more machines. And then, if you do the sharding properly, sharding and replication properly, then you get more machine, you get higher performers, maybe not like higher throughput and lower latency. And of course, like one very important property in distributed system is availability, meaning that if something goes wrong, maybe the network slow or maybe some of the machine fails. Then you should still be able to access your data. You should still be able to use the service. So that's a higher availability. Okay. Then, then there are tons of、uh, real world systems that I fall into this category, like Amazon Dynamo, Cassandra, and React. And then in this work, we focus on the Cassandra. Okay. Then this kind of system, and more precisely, like the 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 term called it, is a NoSQL, meaning not only SQL system, and then on a high level, it can be modeled as a distributed key value storage. And in the theory literature, we also call it to be the read write registers because it provide an illusion of a register, and then it provides like two operations: read operations and write operations. Sometimes we also call it get and put, and then it can also be viewed as a shared key value pair because the data structure is very simple. You have two things: the first one is the key K, and then a value V. And then two operations that I'm going to read some value from、uh, key K, and I'm going to write some value to key K. And because we want to model the network as、uh, what happened in the real world, like internet and、uh, an ideal model.、Uh, A reality model is called a synchronous network because your message delay is kind of、uh, unpredictable, so we have it to be a arbitrary message delay. And the other things is that the system is a client-server model, meaning that we have the servers that store all the data and then that provide the operations, provide the service. And then the client invoke these two data read and write by communicating with the servers. So that's the model we are、uh, focusing on. And the motivation of the paper is that in the literature. Now people have studied tons of distributed storage algorithms, and we also call it a distributed shared memory emulation because we try to emulate a registers on top of message passing system. But like all those algorithms, they are only theoretical analysis. We don't really know what the performance look like. What will be the trade off between different property in the real world system? So the paper try to answer the questions by implementing this algorithm into a real world systems. And what's the trade off we are we we care about? And、um, that、uh, to answer this, we need to know that what are the key properties for this algorithm. 
The first one is consistency, meaning that what version of the data can the client see and then what would be the ordering of operations. And some of the important one called linearizability is that you have an illusion that you are only interacting with a single machine, even though the underlying system is a distributed one. And then we also have a causal consistency. And then we also have a regularity, safeness, all different kind of consistency property. And then the second one is called four towers. What kind of failure model, what kind of malicious behavior can the, the, the server might have? So the crush is the simplest one, is that a fail stop? Is that at one point in time, the server just I stop answering anything? You can think about the machine crush. So that's a very benign model. But some of the worst ones I kind of say my Byzantine, meaning that it can return arbitrary values, but like it cannot modify some of the control message, for example, the timestamp that you are using. And then the worst one is like Byzantine fault, meaning that you can have arbitrary behavior and you can consider that as a machine is controlled by the malicious party. And of course, for all this like, distributed database, latency is very important because we care about how long can we complete an operation. And then because we only focus on two of them, read or write, so that's what we are going to measure. Okay, so here's a kind of example to tell you that what is consistency. Because the system is distributed and then it's kind of all the operations going on concurrently. So it's possible like some of the machine already crashed, some of the machine have a value has value V, the other has value V prime. And then what consistency means is that suppose you have two clients, they try to read the data concurrently then it's possible that this client get V, the other get V prime, okay? For some of the consistency model, it's, it's okay. But uh, if you want to have a stronger one, is that uh, you don't want the client to see different view of the world. So that it's possible that if this person sees V prime, then uh, this client cannot see V prime. It has to see, so it cannot see V, it has to see V prime. And then one way to do this is that you need to have more communication. So for example, this person need to also contact this one. So it actually see V and V prime, and then you can use some of the control mechanism to figure out which one is the newer version of the data. For example, that like you can use physical timestamp or logical timestamp. And then the important thing is that some of the machine might crash and then some of the machine message might be delayed for arbitrarily. And then that's all the things that we need to tolerate in order to, to design a correct and useful distributed storage algorithms. And then what made the problem more interesting is that some of the machine may have a Byzantine behavior, so it can return arbitrary thing. For example, it might tell this client said that actually I have V prime prime prime. V prime prime. And then in this case, you need to have some internal mechanism to figure out what the correct value is. Okay, so this then roughly tells you that why this problem is non-trivial. Okay, so now let's look at that. why do we pick Cassandra as our base system? So what is X Cassandra? Cassandra, as I mentioned, it's a distributed storage, and then it falls into the category of a NoSQL system. And then the model is actually a white column store, but like here we focus only on the single key value pair. In the paper, we also mentioned that how do we structure our data to fully utilize this white column store. And then it was inspired by Amazon DynamoDB. And then it, it was uh, originally designed by Facebook. Now it's an open source and then an active approach project. Even though it's already very old, but I still have an active deployment and tons of like Fortune 100 uh, uh, companies are using it. And last month when I checked it, 
this I still use my 40% of Fortune 100 company and then some of them are the very big company like Apple, Microsoft. So it's a good system, good base system to compare our performers. And then it's also of a practical usage if we can make Cassandra better. And then some of the key design goal of Cassandra is that first is high availability, meaning that there's no single point of failure. Originally, it was designed for eventual consistency, meaning that if there's no right, eventually everyone needs to have a same view of the data or same version of the data because they want to achieve high availability and then this kind of eventual consistency is necessary. And then they want to have uh, this scale out property, meaning that once I add more machines, supposedly the performance should increase linearly. And then the key thing for Cassandra is that the fundamental replication mechanism is current replication. And then if you follow the literature of a DSM emulation or the theoretical distributed algorithm, this quorum techniques is an important component of like how we ensure consistency, how we tolerate failure, and then that this property makes Cassandra a perfect fit to implementing and evaluating these uh, theoretical algorithms. And then, then the, the original designer figured that if we only provide eventual consistency, that's not very useful, not very uh, practical. So they try to provide certain knobs to tune the trade-off between consistency, durability, and latency. And then in our paper, we also describe how we kind of utilize this knob to implement our uh, to implement the theoretical algorithms. And then also there's a P2P design, meaning that all the server, there's no notion of leaders. So the server, they, has, uh, they have an equal uh, responsibility. So that it requires minimal administration. And then this one property is also an important one because that for many of the theoretical algorithms, like the, the server, they have uh, equal responsibility. So like this core replication and P2P design are the two kind of main characteristics why we pick Cassandra so that we can evaluate this the theory, theoretical algorithms fairly. Okay. Now, before we go into detail of how we kind of implement something, I want to share with you very high level how does the uh, Cassandra and then this Amazon DB, a Dynamo DB, do the replication. And then we call it the online, the, the literature called it like PQS. Some of them say practical quorum storage, some of them say probabilistically quorum storage. So like, remember we have two operations, write and read. And then here we have a client. And then the first one is I need to have a timestamp. And then for this, Cassandra on a practical system, just I use a local machine time as a timestamp. And then later I send that, okay, I want to write the data where we have timestamp and then the value B. And here I assume that uh, everything is on the single key case, so for brevity, and then it will send this like kind of message to all of the servers. And then it has a knob to tune the consistency. So here's W. W is an integer between one to three in this case. So upon receiving this thing, then the server will say, hey, I receive it, I receive it. And then if W is two, then this client said, okay, the right operation is completed. And then for re, it's very similar, but I send a different kind of message to the server. I said, hey, I want to get a value. And then you will receive that different uh, key value pair. And then also a timestamp. And then basically the client just like compare the timestamp among all the receive uh, 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 responses and then you will choose the most recent one and return B max. And then the other parameters that the, this Cassandra need to tune is R. 
meaning that the number of re responses that the client needs to wait. Okay, so that's the usage of core and storage. And then as you can see that each server, they behave exactly the same. So that's a P2P. And as we will see later, this, uh, uh, this property, these two property are shared by many of the theoretical algorithms. Okay, so now let's move to the next slide. So two sentence summary of this paper is that we use Cassandra as our base system, and then we adapt and implement an existing DSM algorithm into Cassandra. And then the key is that we, in, uh, we introduce a minimal changes to the original Cassandra code base. And the reason is that we want to provide a very fair comparison. So what that means is that we don't introduce new way of doing communication. We use only Cassandra's or Java's internal data structure so that we can compare it fairly. So in short, we provide a unified and fair framework to evaluate the performance and then a trade-off among all the DSM algorithms that we have implemented. And then one of the key algorithms that we implemented is ABD. It's one of the most popular distributed storage algorithms in the theory literature. And here I briefly mentioned that how it does. And the key thing, let's just look at it right. The first one is that you want to get a timestamp. So if you remember in PQS, you just get your local time. But like in the kind of more theoretical setting is that there's no notion of time because everyone might have a different kind of clock. So that I need to use like get timestamp, meaning that I need to con contact every server and then every server locally, it has some like kind of called logical timestamp, LT. Logical timestamp, which could be an integer. And then like similarly, you need to wait for a current response. Then you pick the Tmax. And once you have Tmax, because you are going to do it right, you say that, hey, I'm going to increase this timestamp by one. And then, then I also need to use have a writer ID, W. So this client's W. And then later, I just use a put data with a new timestamp plus the value that I want to write. And then similarly, you need to send this uh, kind of write request to everyone. And then you need to wait for a quorum to respond to say that, hey, I'm completed. And then you complete the write operation. So that's the kind of two round trip, which is the key difference between this ABD and PQS. And then the other thing is that I, the usage of a logical timestamp, okay? And then for PQS, it's a tunable kind of par parameter, but that here for, for ABD, you need to have a, at least a quorum because your read and write operation has to uh, intersect with each other to ensure the stronger notion of consistency in this particular case is called linearizability. And then for the read, you do it similarly. At first you get a data and then this get data part actually it's the same as, uh, uh, as uh, PQS. But the key thing is line number eight. You need to put the data back into the, into the server to help others to read the data that you want. Okay, so that's a rough idea for ABD. And then if you are familiar with the literature, you will find like this structure of ABD very popular in many of uh, this like current storage or many of the uh, theoretical uh, storage algorithm. And then it also share the similarity between PQS. And then this is why that we are able to adapt in this kind of, and implement in this kind of algorithm into Cassandra. In a nutshell, Cassandra is a very complicated system because it's a industry 
and then production ready system. And then we open up the hood and we uh, change a different layer, particularly the storage layer where we implement our uh, uh, the, the algorithm logic that interact with the database engine. And then the key part is replicator. How do we replicate the data? For example, like for the ABD, we need to specify like who, uh, who, which server to contact and then like what is the quorum. And then like, we also need to like this implement like, the, the write back meaning that I need to first read the timestamp and then and then write the data back. And then I also need to internally keep track of this logical timestamp. And then that all happens in the replicator. And we also open uh, all of implementation are open source and you can check our paper for the GitHub link. And this is the quick summary of our result. And we implement like many different uh, popular algorithm. The ones are ABD that we mentioned. And then later there's also uh, a group that they decompose ABD. So that this multi-writer actually is a family of algorithm that provide different kinds of consistency. And then we also have a very popular one called causal memory that uh, relax the notion for linearizability so that it's possible or actually it's the strongest consistency that can be implemented inside a cap framework. And then for Byzantine failure, we implement two. One is SBQ, the other is uh, BSR. They implement, they, uh, they guarantee a much weaker consistency but like the for tolerance is better. So for example, SBQ, tolerance semi-Byzantine failure, meaning that the, the semi-Byzantine machine, they can temper the value, but the, it cannot temper the timestamp. And then for this BSR, it can tolerate arbitrary faulty behavior. And here is the theoretical analysis of the latency to complete a read or write operations. And then for case one, meaning that the weakest Cassandra configurations that, uh, supports, that support only eventual consistency. So that's kind of the fastest way you can complete this storage. And then in a nutshell is that of course, because we need more communication to tariff failure to, to maintain consistency, the performance will be worse for this algorithm. But if you look at this uh, causal memory, actually the performance loss is pretty small. And at the same time, you get much more useful consistency. But and then what's the impact of failure? is that, okay, I need much more uh, overhead to do something. For example, in the worst case, it might be A type slower, and then the third period is not great. But if you only care about the read performance, actually it's not too bad. And then if you compare SBQ and BSR, so if you only consider read latency, actually BSR is even better than SBQ. And then if you just compare the theory, theoretical analysis, it doesn't tell you much. You say, okay, they are all the same. And then you can only use our framework to figure out like in reality, what's the difference between the performers. And then that's the kind of key contribution of our system. So finally, I want to share some of the evaluation uh, result that we have. We run it on the GCP. It's uh, the small machine for virtual CPU. And then GCP, the round trip delay is pretty fast. It's in a single data center, 0 0.2. And then we have the three virtual machines and for servers and three virtual machine for clients. And this is for average write latency and average read latency. Not surprisingly, like the uh, CAS1 is fastest, fastest, and then like, the red one is like a CAS quorum, and that it provides strong consistency. But like, if you can see that actually the performance difference are not that much. And then the, the, the kind of scalability is also similar. And then more interestingly, is like this write ratio. Again, everything 
looks like kind of make sense, making sense, but like for causal memory. This is again something that we cannot explain by just looking at the theory because of the theory that what's the right ratio it doesn't really matter, but like in our system we can observe that for causal memory if you have more and more right because you need to keep track of the more thing about this uh, vector clock and actually the performance that uh, becomes worse and then at some point it's even worse than quorum storage. So that, so that's uh, something you can only use our system to find out. And then the other one is that for ABD, there's a different notion, the uh, improvement called ABD op optimal, meaning that for real latency, for sometimes you don't need to do a right back. But again, the theory result doesn't tell you is that what is the right performance? Because ABD OPT that optimize the read performance. But like if you compare ABD OPT, which is a purple line, and then a green line here, is that it actually trading off the right performers in favor of re performers. And then this is something that we cannot answer by just looking at the theoretical, theoretical number. And then for this machine time, Again, is that the, uh, what if we say that, okay, our clock synchronization is good enough. We just use machine time. We don't need to use logical timestamp and then actually it improves a lot. And then this is also, again, something that we don't really quite see in, in the original kind of analysis. And then finally, I want to share that, okay, in terms of uh, full tolerance, what kind of penalty we are paying? For ABD, and then you compare the read latency, actually that there's almost no cost by doing SBQ, meaning you tolerate the same mechanism in failure. Of course, that there's a, something not shown in this figure is that SBQ provides only safeness property, where ABD provides a, a denearizability, which is a much stronger notion. But also, again, for many of the application, you might not need linearizability. You only need to have a strong consistency. So that's good. And of course, BSR, you need to have a more communication to tolerate the truly Byzantine failure. But that's the penalty that you need to pay. OK, so finally, the summary is that we provide a unified framework to implement DSM algorithm for Cassandra. And then the takeaway is that many of the interesting performers, like kind of analysis and trade-off, you don't really know, you need to look at the number. And then if you want to have some strengthened properties, then our implementation, our system provides the kind of very basic analysis of like what kind of penalty, what kind of trade-off I'm looking at. Okay. That's all I want to share. Thank you.